Good afternoon everybody. I am 97 which means on scene with this container about to tip over. I'm just waiting on a unit right now for a lane closure because we're on the by the ports as you can tell by all the containers container city over here and this is a hot on-ramp lots of cars flying right here very on-ramp to the 47 north this is the uh, bridge that connects the 110 and the 710 freeways aka the container freeway so once that lane closure comes I'll be able to pull up ahead and Alex and I can get to work okay so the main cop took off so once we get this closure from prevent this traffic from coming through we can take that lane that's a good one man I told the driver right now uh, I can guess how this happened these floors are wood inside so I mean if you were barefoot in socks and you ran in here and slid you would slide well imagine wooden pallets in here when you take this turn ones that curve like this it's just you know it doesn't happen every time but it's gonna happen there's nothing bracing these pallets inside unfortunately again I haven't opened it but I can tell you already that's what happened see how that landing gear is touching the ground and this one's in the air about half a foot So what we do is we take the container off, put it on our land all, and then go to the customer's yard. Later, Hector. Say it for the TV. Huh? Say your catchphrase. I know. No, it's yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he doesn't even do it right no more. Hi, bro. Today's a good example, not tilting over. Huh? Today's a good example to stop it. It's not tilting over. So you were the driver? Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were the driver. No, no. I, I was going to say that's some uh, nice crocs for driving. <laughs> Dad, you suck that ass on that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, look at that little VW bus coming right now. I wouldn't drive one, but those are cool. All right, so while we wait to get this closure, I'm gonna save some time. I have a 5 8 grommet sling in here. These are my big boys, about 30 something thousand in a basket. Uh, got them from my boy Thad over at Bailey's as I do all my equipment. I'm going in the bottom holes just because it's a little unsafe with this lean. Normally we go from the top holes, but what I'm gonna do is attach one line there first and put a lot of pressure on it and then Alex is going to go to the top and the front. That way when he rigs to the top and the front, it's going to be a lot more stable. We undo the locks and then off she goes. Tractor and chassis will pull out and then Joe and the Lando will back up underneath. In fact, I'm going to have him pull up ahead. Well, you could only pull up ahead. Man, I love that new Landall. We've had it for a few months already, so it's not new, new, but it still looks new. All the way up ahead, Joe. Well, our cop is here, so that's our lane closure. Once he uh, throws on his lights, that's cue for me to pull forward. Rigging's already set. In fact, no one's gonna pass him now. Let's do it now. All right, since I already got my rigging on in the back, it's gonna be really easy. Just walk out my lines. Rotate right over. I'm gonna put tension on this one first to correct the lean and stabilize it. And then Alex will rig to the front. By the way, I went live on YouTube. It's my second time trying it, or third, I guess, technically to the members, but uh, if you're not subscribed, you should do that because I think it gives you a notification when I do. I'm going to start doing that a lot more on these jobs where I'll have like a secondary camera and record the whole thing start to finish live. No cuts, no editing. It's a pretty cool feature. And I'm thinking of when I do that, I can uh, do giveaways and whatnot. 
this uh, particular container found that it's loaded with toilets. Toilets. Heavy toilets. The only thing is I noticed a few commenters at the end said the streaming was a little, because uh, you're limited to your phone data. And the max I guess here is 720 resolution. So I'll look into getting some kind of like super fast hotspot for like unthrottled 5G for 4K streaming. I'm all about that 4K baby. Yeah. Now once I align myself good, I'm gonna put on my uh, Bailey's sleeves for protection against this. Jabonero, hey, where's your coffee? Huh? No coffee, no Starbucks. I'm dying for one right now. I'm gonna throw another one over. Oh yeah, baby, beautiful. And then this one too. I don't know how more people in the towing and recovery industry don't have enough of these, man. They're such a relatively cheap option and these slings take so much abuse because they're so strong and can take it and these sleeves prolong them so well. I'll be sure to hit up Bailey. Tell him your boy Josh sent you. Okay. It's good. Beautiful. Okay, Alex. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, you lifted it up. Did it mess it up? Tighten up. Go, safe. So I guess when I tightened up, Alex had the ladder in between uh, the bottom right there on the ridge. Hey, it didn't break or anything? No. Nice. Not that happened, that never happened. What can go wrong, just like my dad says, what can go wrong will go wrong. And this is proof. Can go wrong, it will. So now Alex can. He's going to look at the video and he's going to be laughing. I told you. You never listen. So like I was saying, now that I got it safe, Alex is going to rig to the top. And then it's lift off. Now another reason why we prefer lifting to the top is you have so much more control. With one truck on top and one on the bottom like mine, we're fine. But if you imagine, I always imagine the scenario, a box. Try to imagine lifting up a box and putting two fingers underneath the box on each end, right? And you lift up. If someone comes and just taps like that, it'll fall off your hand, right? Now imagine the same thing where you're pinching the box from the top and then someone comes off and taps the box again, it's just gonna swing provided you have a good grip, right? It's the same uh, same principle here. But instead of a box, you got a 40,000 pound container with the shifted load. By the way, guys, check this out. I, um, I took off the lock already, but it was like this, which is in the lock position. But this is why these container locks come undone so easy. This driver did not put the safety latch right here. So you put the lock, and then you put that. It kind of keeps it in place more. So when you don't have it on and you just lock it like that, and you drive hundreds of miles, cross country, or just like an animal, these things can and will vibrate. You see how easy it is to push around? Bam. Then you take a corner too fast, the slot comes undone, and you guys know the rest.
All right, Alex is ready. I'll wait for him to get by his truck. Oh man, without any pressure. Alex, remove pressure from this side. More from this side? No, remove it. Cause look, I'm already mad airborne and the other side's still in. So, no, no, no. So from the driver's side, can you remove pressure? Hold it. Alex, it's making it worse. In fact, go down period. Let's do one at a time. I don't like the way it's gonna pop off violent. Can you go back down, relieve tension? So if you see here, I got a lot of slack with this cable and it's already, yeah, hold it there, please. I'm gonna take off the back first, okay? So we're gonna do one at a time. Yeah, I don't like how that is. That's gonna snap nasty. I mean, the lock's undone. You have no tension, right? I have no tension. Okay, we're gonna do the front first. You take yours on, you're off. Once you do the front, then I'll worry about the back. That was crazy. We were getting way too airborne on just that one lock, which means when it eventually breaks free, it's gonna recoil ugly. Well, once you're, are you airborne? Okay. Let's try this again, guys. Much better, like butter. So we'll just have this driver pull forward. I'll set the camera down. Oh, I love these, man. This driver should have already been aired up and out. Language barrier. Let me show you guys how this works. So this creates a nice cushion, a barrier, because even though this part itself isn't sharp, that force against here is pretty strong. So it gives it a nice cushion and it protects it from the bottom right here too. Because this part will be a little bit jagged. You can see right here where my finger is. And this protects that even though it's got the ballistic cover on it. All right, guys, what's the hold up? Is he ready? Yeah. You're... Is he the driver? Do we know why, what's the hold up? Huh? Do we know what the hold up is? On this? No, he, he gotta go. He gotta leave. He's ready, okay. Yeah, he's the higher you can go okay make sure you're cutting that fire because i had told him earlier about the air i don't think he understood me language barrier bro language barrier it happens all the time man you guys are chinese yeah we're chinese how do you chinese. say how do you say air in chinese air air fire kong chi so if i want a chinese guy to build a bear i say kong chi Kong Chi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kong yeah. Chi. Kong Chi. <laughs> yeah, he got that. Yeah, bro, there we go. I got a thumbs up. Kong Chi. 
I'm gonna forget that word after this video. The chassis looks good. The chassis is great, it's a shift to load. What? The chassis load, okay. It's a shift to load, man. Yeah, now, because I saw the suspension screen is like that. And just the weight is not even weight. Oh yeah. Officer, I got one question for you. What are those? Time for Joe, hey. Java Joe. All right, Joe, do your magic. Beautiful, Joe. Good? All right. So this is going to be called an offset like I do so much on this channel. Where we're going to put it about a foot or so on the driver's side more. To compensate for the load shift. Let me hold it there. So you see how it's like barely sticking inside of this lip right here. And then this side, you got all this space. But that's because all the load on the container is on the left side. I got no tension. What do you think, Joe? Now we do a walk around. Looks good to me. Good or what? You're happy with those toilets? Oh, bad. Oh, bad. See how I was leaning on the chassis? That's because you got those four locks. It could only go in one position on a chassis. On a Landau, it's an open bed. So if something shifted, you, you can't risk reshifting this in midair here like you could scrap metal containers because they're toilets. You could break every single one of them. Yeah, I'm happy with this. All right. Way. these slings are so cool dude the uh, Bailey's grommet slings with with the lock on the bottom of a container you're able to slide these through no problem and they're stronger than chain too I said 30 what are these rated at in a basket 33 33 and a half and removal is so easy Ta-da! Easy peasy. Just like that, bulk is put away. So I'm gonna just retract the underlift, double check Joe. 
and then uh, follow to the offload. Don't scratch the paint now. Working truck, a land all. Make that money. So when we put the trucks away, Joe did the front. Now we're just gonna cross the rear, and we're going super local, which is great. You want to take the lead? Yeah. And we'll follow you. Yeah, with traffic, maybe 10. And again, I'll show you guys how extreme, well, it's not that extreme compared to how we've done it, but. It's almost, if you see the lock here, flush with the bed, as opposed to here, not flush. But we'll get back to you guys when we're offloading. I always like capturing these harsh turns, if you can see in the rearview mirror, how perfectly that container sits on the Landall, despite it being offset. It's technically center. Another one right there. If we had put it on the middle of the bed, just the way it was on the chassis, that whoa, that would have flipped. No way, no Joe. Okay, guys, this is part of the the job. Sometimes the customer is refusing to pay. I had to give him a business card. Let me make sure uh, Joe has enough room to U-turn in here. Oh yeah, dude. There's plenty of them. Huh? He's got Okay, now we're on standby. The customers always have a different tune when I say, we'll just take you to my shop and you guys pick it up for even more fees. That's the thing when we get called by the California Highway Patrol and police calls is they got jurisdiction on the freeways. If you got something leaning that's in danger like that, you can't leave it indefinitely. What if this guy's tower is like from Sacramento and you can't say, you know, it's gonna stay there overnight. CHP calls their local vendor, which happened to be us on this rotation. And it is what it is. Well, no, I think the cargo guy's arguing with the, the container gun. What a mess. <laughs> What is that all about? I guess his boss says he's gonna pay. Oh, his boss is gonna pay direct? That's what he's saying. Okay. He's trying to tell him. He's gonna take it, but he's just gonna take it. Oh, come! All right, so we got the stuff situated. What happens is there's so many people involved with these loads. You got the cargo people, the brokers, the shippers, the container haulers, and they all pass around the bill. Everyone wants the product, but no one wants to pay. But the good thing is we don't have to use the rotators because they got this freaking monster at the yard. Crazy. And waiting on the driver to come in and then boom. Easy peasy lift off. We need one of those. That's it. That's sick, huh? Imagine they smell one of those in the yard. <laughs> I don't think this one has a computer or a screen because he's eyeballing it. But still, that's pretty cool. There we go. Lift up, baby. All right, this guy needs us out of the yard, so 
Job well done. Peace out, guys, to the next one.